violations of a delusional mirror. Hello, welcome to Revelations of Delusional Mirror. I'm Angela, your host. This is episode 149, and it is Thursday, June 15, 2017. On to updates and housekeeping. Welcome if you are new, if you are returning, I thank you as always, and either way, I hope you enjoy. I think last summer the same thing happened, like I didn't record as regularly as I usually did, because there's a lot of things going on on days off and stuff like that. There's some other reasons, which I will tell you shortly. Um, the show is on iTunes, YouTube, DelusionalNitter.com, and I also post a link in the Ravelry group, Revelations of Delusional Knitter. If you're not already a member, come on over and join. Declarations. What's been going on? At work, um, it's funny, the last episode I talked about never assuming that what you got for a call is the same thing you already had. For example, a car accident. Even though most car accidents we get several calls because people that drive by call. <clears throat> well, right after I recorded that episode and said that, I did just that. <laughs> we had an accident and then another accident, like I don't know, 50 feet away. They were close enough to flag down the officers that were already at the other accident, let's put it that way. And, um, yeah, no idea. During the, like, six different phone calls, I didn't realize because they were giving me the same exact landmarks, so I assumed it was the same car accident. Yeah, don't do that. Never assume. So I'm back into the habit of asking, is it a blue Subaru and a silver Toyota? You know, just to make sure. Or is it a red pickup and a white sedan? You know, so, oh, God. I get Right after I said that, that happened. That's always the way, isn't it? Um, another funny thing that happened was uh, if somebody reports somebody missing, um, lots of people think that you need to wait 24 hours. You do not. You don't need to wait any time at all. Uh, you can report somebody missing whenever you want. Sometimes the officers will ask you some questions, and if it's somebody who, you know, could go somewhere or you don't talk to all the time and blah, 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 then they might ask you if you want to wait a little bit and see if they turn up before you do that. But there is no waiting period at all, at least not in my state. Um, but anyway, this guy had been reported missing, and he was, you know, he had some mental health issues and was going through some stuff, so they were really worried about him, so they reported him missing. Uh, within a couple of hours, and I was driving home that night. I was driving home, and there was a guy walking down the sidewalk, but he was kind of walking weird, <clears throat> and he was a very tall person, very large, and he was carrying his sweatshirt, but he was carrying it weird. Like, you know, most people would fold it up and hold it like this, or carry it in your hand. He had his arm like this, and it was just kind of hanging down and waving around. So, when I drive home, it's dark out, but I had noticed this. It caught my eye because of the weird, you know, sweatshirt flapping in the breeze there, and I went about another 20 feet, and I was like, oh my god, that's the guy. <laughs> so I pulled over and texted the officer that was investigating it. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I just passed your guy walking down Main Street. And uh, then it was. They went and they found him. So that was just funny. Because it didn't even dawn on me at first. Actually, I looked and I was like, you're weird. And then I kept going, and then I was like, oh god, that's him. <laughs> so I stopped. Uh, what else has been going on? Traveling Monsters. I'm doing the Traveling Monsters again, which is fun. And right now, I have Percival visiting me, so they're all Rebecca Danger patterns on the Rebecca Danger group, and we do like, it's kind of like a round robin thing almost. There's a group of us, and we each send to the same person until you get yours back at the end. So I'm having fun with that. Although, poor Percival, I left home the other day. Um, we went to a show... My husband's sister got us all tickets, so his other sister and her husband and his parents and us and she and her husband all went to this show, and it was kind of a comedy. It wasn't like a stand-up comedy. It was a music thing. So it was impersonators of Johnny Cash, Elvis, oh, crap, I'm not going to remember the other guy's names, uh, Jerry Lewis, and Carl Perkins. That's who it was. I, apparently those four had ended up doing some songs together for the record label that they were they had started with and it was all about that and that record label was just starting out and it had these you know really who ended up being very famous people and it was kinda of funny you know they made some jokes and stuff like that it was great the Johnny Cash guy was amazing if I closed my eyes I wouldn't have known that wasn't Johnny Cash he was really really good um, and I like Johnny Cash so that was awesome I like Elvis too, but he's not one of my favorites. I really like Johnny Cash over anybody else. And I don't like country, but for whatever reason, 
I really like his stuff. Uh, I like Willie Nelson. You know, those big mm, ones who just have something very different than the genre. And um, you know what I mean. If you like them, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that was awesome and lots of fun, but I forgot to take my traveling monster. And we went out to eat afterwards, and then we went and got ice cream, so that would have been great photo opportunities, but <laughs> totally forgot. Because we were rushing around, as usual, because I'm always late to everything, except for work, because I work for the police, and that uh, just doesn't happen. You just can't do that. So <laughs> that's about the only thing I'm ever on time for, is work. Um, Nico is doing awesome. He's still on the supplement, and will be for some time. And then they're going to have him go off it and wait a bit and then test his blood work again to see how he's doing. Um, we did his blood work after he was on it for a month. I have no idea what these numbers mean, but they're the liver enzyme levels or something. And for example, when he was sick before, like sick sick when I brought him in, it was like 108 they said, and now it's down to 47. So whatever that means, um, it sounds good, but I don't really understand what the numbers mean. And he's good and doing fine now, so I didn't ask any more questions at the time because whatever. Um, he seems to be doing very well and improving with the medicine, so we'll just leave it at that for now. And the other reason I have no time at all right now is because we adopted something. Or I should say I did. I'm not so sure my husband was completely on board. Or is. No. He loves her. But it, she's a lot of work. Um, we adopted this. <laughs> so this is Lucy. She is six months old now. She was five months old when we got her six weeks ago. She is a Catahoula Leopard Dog, which is a herding and hunting dog. So, as I'm sure just from that, you know what I mean. She takes up <clears throat> all of my free time at the moment. So, and she's, she's a little bit of a challenge. In the past, I've had Roddy's I fostered for Rottweiler Rescue. And I ended up adopting one of my foster dogs and had her for several years. <clears throat> she had some behavioral issues that we worked through and you know after a few years she was an excellent dog and she was fabulous and she was sweet and she loved everybody and she was you know perfectly well behaved but it took a few years um and now yeah that's gonna Lucy doesn't have any behavior problems she's just a puppy so I have to teach her from scratch what is acceptable and what is not um but she is a little bit of a challenge especially because of the nature of the type of dog she is for example last night when I got home from work she decided to have a wrestling match with her bed in the living room and then decided that I should join it. So, being a herding dog, what she decided to do was run across the room to me and bite me. <laughs> Which, she's nipping, but she nipped me hard enough right above the knee. You know that really good fleshy spot that you can pinch real good? Hard enough that I still have a mark today. So, um, yeah. And she's not terribly nippy. She's still teething. Her puppy teeth are falling out and she's getting her adult teeth. So she is mouthy. But she usually doesn't nip. She's only nipped me one other time since I've had her in six weeks. But yeah, that I was just like, oh my god. I'm going to strangle you. Uh, yeah. So things like that are a little challenging sometimes. Because out of, the, out of nowhere, she was doing fine. She was playing with her toys and rolling around in her bed. And then she ran across the room and grabbed onto my knee. Like, hey, you should play too, yank. So, yeah, uh, she's learning. She actually, the six weeks that we've had her, though, when we first got her, she would jump like a kangaroo. She was absolutely obnoxious. She would jump on you and push you and do all these things. And now, really, it's like every once in a while she does something like that, and the jumping is almost nil. When she gets really excited, she jumps, but she actually is starting to learn, and she doesn't jump on me. She just jumps up and down next to me, which that's fine, because you know what? You're not touching me, and you're just excited, so I don't really care about that. Um, so she is definitely learning, and she's getting much better, but sometimes, you know, like children, you just want to struggle them. All right, revelations. I do have an FO, only one. Um, I was working on that Rivendell smoke ring before, and it's a cowl by Susan Pandorf, and I was doing it in a Lord of the Rings-inspired gradient colorway from the Unique Sheep, and it's done, and it's gorgeous, and I love it. And like I said before, when I did the first color, I loved it. And then when, when this blue came in, I was like, oh, God, I don't know. But then with the rest of it, I really like it, and it came out really good. So I'm happy with that. That is my only FO. Um, let's see what we have here. String theory. That I have a lot of. 
So on Blaine Fleece and Fiber, we're doing the adventures in Fleece and Fiber for two months. It was May and June. And what that is is for you to try different fibers that you've never tried before and, you know, try and spin up a lot of different things. So I have several FOs for that. Excuse the crinkling. There's lots of bags involved here. The first one I did is some caracal comb top, two ounces I had from Spunky Eclectic that's been in my stash forever. And that's a very rustic wool and it's very tough like it's good for rugs and things like that um it's not it actually feels a little soft it does have an undercoat that was a lot softer but i did like a bulky two ply with that but you can see the guard hairs in there it's very wiry it shed a lot it was all over the room and all over me so that's one skein then the other stuff i have i had some cormo in my stash also forever from actually it's five years old in May. It was from the one of the fiber festivals I went to five years ago. And that I liked a lot. That was roving though, which I'm not super great at. I'm very much a worsted spinner and I like to spin worsted, but I'm getting a lot better at um, long draw and you know different types of woolen spinning. So this was my Cormo and I just did one ounce I think and it came out like 32 yards chain ply but that was fun to try that out it's super soft Cormo is it's very um, it's got a lot of crimp it's very elastic it's super soft um, llama in a little bit I will talk about the New Hampshire sheep and wool festival that I went to this year and I got this there I got some small fibers to try out for my adventure spinning and I got two separate balls. This is like two ounces. They were one ounce each balls of llama. One was like a cream color and one was a dark brown. That's my llama and it came out really good and I was really happy with it. It's very soft. It's very drapey as you can see. There's like no um, elasticity to it at all. And that came out good. Then I had some Columbia which I also got at the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool. Just a little one ounce ball of Columbia Top and I absolutely love this fiber. It is super elastic and springy and awesome and I did another chain ply and it came out really even after I plied it. It wasn't like super even when I spun it up but it came out really even when I plied it and I found that I really really love this fiber. And Columbia is um, I don't know if I remember now. I had it in my spinning notebook. Columbia is, I don't know if I wrote that down. It's a like cross of two different breeds. Oh, I did. Lincoln Longwell Rams with Rambouillet Ewes. So the Rambouillet is like a really fine wool, and the Lincoln Longwell is a long wool. So the combination of it, though, was awesome because it's super soft and elastic, but the staple length is longer and it's sturdier. So it was really, really fun to spin, and I really enjoyed it. That's my um, spinning notebook example of it. Then, so that's all that I have finished. Then I was also spinning for the Merkwood spin along and my Merkwood spindles. And I spun up two spindles worth of Icelandic from Mikey from Blaine Fleece and Fiber in the there and back again colorway. And I now have my plying ball. So I wound off my two spindles and I will be plying this soon. So I'm excited about that. I did still have some left on one spindle. I already did, and then I applied more on the second one and wound that off. And I still have some on the first spindle, but I was like, you know what, I'm done. Because the spin along ends at the end of the month, so I really need to start applying it if I want to finish it. Uh, scrolls, I'm not going to have anything for scrolls for this episode because I'm just completely disorganized and have way too much stuff going on. So, New Hampshire Sheep and Wool was awesome. I went with my sister. She recently moved back to, that's the puppy screeching right now, by the way. I don't even know if the camera's picking up, but um, I've already let her out, and she's all set. But this is why I've gotten nothing done recently. Um, it was awesome. I went with my sister. She recently moved back up to Massachusetts from Florida when my dad retired, and my two sisters moved down because they're a lot younger than me. They're like 10 years younger than me. And um, that's super exciting because I have like a built-in friend. <laughs> and she does, um, she crochets and likes like nerdy stuff and, and stuff like that, so that's really awesome. So we went there. Um, the weather wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible, so it was actually nice. It was a little cool, which is way better than being super hot. There was a ton of stuff. 
and it was a lot of fun. And I got, here's just some of the stuff, I got some Angora and Cormo, two ounces of, I'm assuming it's roving, um, in this awesome purple. I got some, what was this? This was mohair. Um, this really cool purple. She said it was supposed to be like pansies, but it didn't come out right, but I still really like it. So that's cool. And I got this bat. This bat I saw, it was a little expensive, because I think it was like $38. I saw this bat, and I was like, oh my god, I love that. And my sister was like, it matches your sneakers. And I was like, well, that's probably why I love that. <laughs> so uh, we went around, you know, and around and around, and there was still two there before we left. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to get that bat. That would be an awesome gradient. Then I also got, um, like I said, the llama and stuff. And I also got four ounces of thin top to try because I've never spun thin. So, and then I got some like handmade soaps and some little goodies like that. So, um, I got another sheep that got added to the collection here. This is gonna go awesome. We're gonna listen to the dog scream the whole time. Uh, let me see if I can wrap this up quickly. So, I also recently participated in some swaps and get some good stuff. We did the book and yarn swap on the Yarn Therapy Zone board, and I got some awesome stuff. I got some merino fiber in these awesome colors. I also have some merino in like a purple, pink, and blue that I think I might even like mix with this one. I think that would be pretty cool. Then I also got some awesome yarns in that one. Some socks are rock even. And I got a bunch of other goodies, like edible goodies that are gone and stuff like that. And then it's a book and yarn swap, so I got, she actually sent me two books. I got a sweater knitting one, so that's cool. And sock yarn studio, which is awesome and perfect, because I have so much sock yarn. So that's cool. That one's like all kinds of different stuff to make with sock yarn. Hats, mittens, everything. Um... We also did the stuffy swap on my group, and Lynn sent me an awesome package. She made me a little kitty, and I got a bunch of, there's a whole bunch of these little mini skeins, and a spinner's control card, which is awesome because I've been wanting one forever, and putting it on like all the swaps, and now I finally have one. And then not buying one just in case somebody got one on a swap. And then she's from Canada. So I have some maple, there's a whole bunch of maple candies, and also there was a maple chocolate uh, lollipop, but it's in the fridge because the day this was delivered, it was 95 degrees out, so that was getting a little melty, so <laughs> I threw it in the fridge. Um, I also got, oh, right now she's killing me, mustache yarns, killing me. She's doing the Great Reads colorways, and she had a Harry Potter and a Narnia, and then there's going to be a Lord of the Rings. So, of course, I'm going to order, like, one of each, right? So, the Harry Potter one already came. So, it's the boy that lived is this. And then she does, like, three different coordinating skeins that you can get for heels and toes. And I picked... What did I pick? I don't even remember. Hogwarts. So, I got that. And then I ordered the Narnia one already. And I'm sure I will order the Lord of the Rings one. Um... Harrison, no, Intentions, Sock Patterns. I have two sock patterns going, and one, the lovely Lisa, Fiber Nymph Dye Work, sent me yarn to do this sock pattern, and now it's been forever because I haven't finished my second sock, so I haven't released the pattern yet. But I will soon, hopefully. Um, I have one sock done. As you can see, it's lovely. It's got some twisted stitches and some lace on the front. It's toe up, the gusset's on the bottom of the sock, and... It's a lovely sock. If I had a second one, I could take photographs and get the pattern out. But I don't know how long that's going to be. And then I'm working on another one for the Super Sock Scare Fest that will be happening in October. Um, Ravelry patterns. I do have some Ravelry patterns for you today. Probably going to cut this short. I might skip reading in TV because the puppy is screaming and apparently I have to... Actually, she's quiet now, but that's not always a good thing, is it? So then you're like, what are you doing? She is in her crate, so she's safe and everything, but, you know, she might be eating her crate pad. I don't know. Um, the first one is Dreamcatcher. It's this awesome, like, colorwork shawl. It's $6. 
is really awesome. And then I have Serenity. So this probably takes fingering weight. I don't even know. Yeah. Fingering weight yarn. Serenity is a crochet one. It's actually a blanket, but the pattern also comes with instructions to make a triangular shawl. And it's this really cool lacy stitch pattern for crochet. And um, it's $2.49. I like that one a lot. And then the last one is Tumps. It's free. And it's one of those like use up your leftover sock yarn ones. That looks really cool. Especially as a freebie. Because then you can use up your leftover bits. Um, let's see. That's all that's been going on. Um, I guess I still have eight minutes, so maybe we can do reading. I finished a really great book recently, and it was actually a recommendation on the recommendation swap on one of the groups of Goodreads that I'm in, and it's called The Winter People. It's by Jennifer McMahon. It was an excellent story. It flashed back from 1908 to present time, and it was like, it had to do with what happened in 1908 that led up to, I don't want to give away any spoilers, this time, so it's the same thing, but it, it dribbled information to you over the entire book so it was really cool so it's kind of like a mystery and it was kind of suspenseful so it was awesome and right now another recommendation swap I'm reading the passage by Justin Cronin that book actually is almost 900 pages so that's gonna take a little while I read so much and then on the Kindle I look and I'm like six <laughs> percent so that's just funny TV I finished prison break the end was kind of the but I was super happy to have Prison Break back again, so I really didn't care. Um, it was a good ending, but it was kind of like, really? Did you just like run out of ideas and just be like, we gotta wrap this up? Um, Orange is the New Black is on again, so that's awesome. Especially because it's Netflix, so you can binge watch it, because when they release it, they release all the episodes. Also, Netflix F is for Family is back on again, too. That was that cartoon with Bill Burr that's really funny. I finished Base Motel. That ended awesome. Um, it was really, really good. If you've never watched it, you watch it. It's like amazing. Especially if you liked Psycho. It's really amazing. And some of the stuff they did, I talked about it before because I watched Psycho the last time. Um, it was really awesome. I believe I finished Lucifer because that really seemed like a finale, the last episode, and that is awesome as well. And I also finished Legion, which I was talking about before. That's one of the Marvel ones, I think. Um, that was totally not what I expected at all, and I really, really liked that one. And the other weekend we went to see the final Pirates movie with my mom and her friend. We've seen all of them together out of the movies, so it was a lot of fun. And it was really, really good. It was sad that it was the last one, but um, it was awesome and lots of fun. And the movie theaters now have those like reclining leather seats and bars, so I got a mojito so I could have some rum while I watched Pirates, because I thought that was only appropriate. <laughs> and I think that might be it for this episode. So I'm sorry this one's short and quick, but um, I gotta go do something with that crazy puppy. And I've had a lot of overtime lately, and I feel like I don't have time to do anything anymore, and I have to go do my laundry and all my stuff. This is my day off. I do have overtime tomorrow, but only four hours. And yeah, so thank you for joining me, and happy knitting and spinning.